Hello. In today's lecture about Laplace equation, I will collect basic definitions. And at the end of the lecture, I will also make a remark about violation of well posedness in elliptic problems in two dimensions. So Laplace equation is associated with the Laplace operator. It's a linear second order PDE which in its homogeneous version is called Laplace equation and in its non-homogeneous version is called Poisson equation. These two equations are very important in three dimensions where the Laplace operator looks like second partial of x plus second partial of y plus second partial of z and where the function u is u of x, y, z. Then in its homogeneous version, Laplace equation looks like this. And in its Poisson version, it looks like that. These two equations are very important in Newton's gravity and Maxwell's electrodynamics. There, they describe potentials of stationary gravitational field in case of Newton's gravity and stationary electric field in case of Maxwell electrodynamics. The Laplace equation corresponds to the potential of these fields outside the sources whereas Poisson equation describes potentials of the field as produced by the mass or charge density given in terms of the function f. Laplace equation can be also considered as a particular case of the heat equation. And this particular case corresponds to this when function u doesn't depend on time. Since the title of this course is Introduction to PDE, we will only discuss Laplace equation and its non-homogeneous counterpart Poisson equation in two dimensions. Okay, so in our case, the unknown function u is function only of two variables and the Laplace operator is. So in two dimensions, the Laplace equation looks like this and the Poisson equation looks like this. What is important is that these are linear PDEs. This one is homogeneous and this one is not homogeneous. As linear PDEs of second order, they are elliptic equations. When we look for solutions of these equations, we are interested in solutions in a domain of R2. So what is a domain? A domain is a connected open subset of R2. Okay, so that's what domain means. And we stress that the boundary of a domain does not need to be smooth. For our purposes, piecewise smoothness suffices. So in particular, a domain can be a rectangle and the boundary can have edges. So, as always, these are our PDEs and one usually imposes boundary conditions on the solutions. You'll be interested in three kinds of boundary conditions. The first one is a Dirichlet boundary conditions which when we have a domain D here is the boundary and we are interested in a function U as a solution of Laplace or Poisson equation then we say that this function U which is a solution of these PDEs satisfies Dirichlet boundary conditions provided that the function u on the boundary 
is equal to a given function h of x, y. The von Neumann boundary conditions request that the normal derivative of the function u is equal to a given function h on the boundary. So if we have our domain and its boundary, then at boundary we can consider normal vector to the boundary at every point. And now we consider the normal derivative, which is the inner product of the normal vector with the gradient. And we request that the normal derivative of function u is equal to a given function on the boundary. So this is the von Neumann boundary condition. This is the Dirichlet boundary condition. And there is the third kind of boundary conditions, which in the literature are called boundary conditions of the third kind. In British or American literature, it could be called Robin boundary conditions. And these boundary conditions request that the linear combination of the unknown function and its normal derivative is equal to a given function on the boundary. So we have three kinds of boundary conditions of particular interest, which are just Dirichlet von Neumann and the boundary conditions of the third kind. In general, an elliptic problem in two dimensions is not well posed. We will show an example exhibiting this feature, and this example is due to Jacques Adama. We consider Laplace equation in the upper half plane, and we are looking for a function u satisfying this equation, which satisfies the following initial conditions. Note that because of appearance of n in the denominator here, this initial condition where n is very large is an arbitrarily small perturbation of the trivial initial condition, which as a solution has u identically equal to zero in the entire upper half plane. But when one solves this equation with these initial conditions, one finds that the following u is a solution. Note that here hyperbolic sign of ny stays. So I claim that this is a solution of the Laplace equation in the upper half plane and it satisfies these boundary conditions. So let us now fix n to be capital N very, very large. So note what happens here. If we take these initial conditions, then the solution of our PDE in the upper half plane is u equal zero everywhere. Now we perturb these initial conditions very slightly if we choose n to be very large, but the solution obtained for this very slight perturbation of the trivial boundary conditions for the trivial solution gives a solution which can be arbitrarily large, far away from x-axis. So small change in initial conditions produces big change in the solution. So the solution is unstable. So as I said, elliptic problems in two dimensions are in general not well posed because the solutions are not stable.